probably one of my favorite guests to have on the show. Uh, Bill Bender, you check out all uh, his written work over at the Sporting News, covering all things college football, national college football right over there. And you can listen to him over on the College Football Nation podcast. And, uh, Bill, it's always good to, to talk college football with you. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me on. Oh yeah, it's good to talk to you, good Bill. And we haven't uh, haven't really spoke since uh, I think the week the season started. Uh, uh, and here we are, uh, the regular season. We've had championship weekend this past weekend. Uh, the season always seems to uh, to fly by. Of course, we got the bowls, we got the Heisman Trophy, we got the Army Navy game, we got the obviously the playoff coming up. But uh, uh, just kind of just looking back at these last fourteen weeks of the season as we head into the postseason. I mean, h- how would you best define what this season has been? A um, little bit of everything, fast as usual. As you know, this thing goes fast and um, some unexpected things along the way. And obviously the story has become like the NBA and NFL in some ways that now the story is the off season and the transfer portal and the coaches moving. And that's taken on more precedence than ever before that it almost overshadowed the bull announcements in the playoff and everything there. So in terms of the games on the field, it was a lot of fun and, you know, we get a good, pretty good playoff with four very good teams in that. Yeah, I told somebody the other day, we, uh, me and some buddies were talking about the transfer portal. I'm like, it's kind of like if you took NFL or NBA free agency and decided, let's have it uh, uh, in the middle of when the regular season ended and then when the playoffs start is, uh, is basically what we're having here. It's been it's been a wild ride with just a transfer portal and just, you know, obviously you pay attention to what, you know, the quarterbacks, what doing there. Uh, was there any names that did enter the portal, especially at the quarterback position, that really caught you off guard, or you had your sense of, wow, I really didn't expect that guy to hit, hit the portal? I like Spencer Sanders at Oklahoma State. That's one. You know, he's been around for a while. JT Daniels back in the portal for the fourth time, um, or the, gonna have his fourth different school. And, you know, DJ Yamongalele, that wasn't a surprise so much as I'm interested to see where he lands for his next step and where he'll play after this year. Yeah, you know, you mentioned DJ. What what do you think? You know, for other teams, other schools out there looking for a quarterback, what do you think the market is for him? Because obviously, we, we know the upside. You know how good he can be. He showed it this year. He, I thought early in the year he was a very improved quarterback. Uh, the game against Wake Forest, but later in the year, some of the things from last year kind of reared their ugly head again. Uh, when you see him, what kind of quarterback do you think he is? And you know, where can you think? Maybe not where he could land, but just kind of what the market would be for him at these other schools. Well, I mean, it's five-star tools. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, five-star talent, five-star player, uh, plays within themselves and uh, those kind of things. And, you know, he had some struggles. Some of that was development. Some of that was, you know, the receivers around him. And I think sometimes it's just when you have a guy like Kate Klubnick behind him, it's time for a change of scenery. So he goes to the right spot and continues his development with his size and his physical, you know, tools. I think he could have some success. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I, I was, I was kind of, I'll be honest with you, for me personally, I was kind of shocked on Monday when I saw Devin Leary hit the portal. I, you know, was, I mean, I know, uh, North Carolina State played what about, you know, five, 10 different quarterbacks this year. I'm being sarcastic, of course. Uh, but for him, I mean, that's a guy, whoever gets him, I mean, he goes somewhere else. That's going to be a big gift for somebody, especially if he goes to a, a team that thinks they can contend for the college football playoff next season. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously another experienced quarterback injuries kind of got in the way this year, regressed a little bit after. But anytime you have a quarterback with enough talent like he did last year when he threw for 35 touchdowns and five interceptions and, and had North Carolina State right there, they beat Clemson last year. Uh, you know, yeah, definitely a guy. He'll fit somewhere too, and, and his skill set will do a team a lot of good. Yeah, I kind of look at the portal, Bill, and I kind of wonder, you could just fill the team with these guys. <laughs> I mean, well, you probably could, and that's sign of the times. I mean, re- yeah. regardless of what your opinion is, I'm not a huge fan of it personally, but um, I'm also not an 18 to 22 year old kid trying to get my tape or my game on tape. So um, I see both sides of it. Yeah, one thing I I, I kind of I hate about it is just, and I, of course, you know, the way a school calendar will land, you understand why it's happening now. It's better for them to announce now, obviously, because you want to get into the school before. You know, the winter hits and all that stuff before January hits, but also with the bowls, you know, it does kind of put it, uh, we already have the deal with players opting out for bowl games. I have no issue with them doing that. But also now you see, you're going to, you always wonder if there's going to be some of these bowl games where a teams are just not going to have enough players to field a competitive team because of the transfer portal now. Yeah, I mean, that that's probably the next 
step, unfortunately, and, and part of the well, the people that say that bulls get, don't matter, well, are the same people that, that are saying these are good for college football. So which one is it? You know, like for me, it's nice to have football on the television. It's nice to watch all 41 games, and I'll watch as much of it as I can because, you know, what we're going to be complaining about next, not having college football on the te- television. So, um, yeah, and – We'll see if there's a team out there that gets ravaged enough by the portal where they can't play. I won't be surprised. Yeah, uh, you know, talking about the uh, the playoff, and I'm sure you know you've been asked this, and we're dropping this on Thursday. We're, we're talking on a Wednesday. I'm sure you've been asked this repeatedly, and uh, it's probably a simple question to answer. But in your opinion, with the four teams, did the committee get it right? Yeah, I, I do. I, I think they not only did they get them right, they ranked them right. You know, there's some. People out there saying, well, Georgia should play TCU because they're, they're getting, you know, they're not getting rewarded with an easier matchup. Well, Ohio State didn't earn it, right? Like they, mm-hmm. they didn't play on conference championship weekend. Those other three teams did. So not only do I think they got the four teams right, I did like Ohio State over Alabama and Tennessee. Um, I think they got the order right as well. Yeah, you know, and I, I had it. My, my thought, and I'd love to get your take on this, was when I look at TCU losing to Kansas State in the Beach World Championship game in overtime, and I also look at the fact is that TCU, in a way, you can say, well, they beat everybody on their schedule because they already had a win over Kansas State. And in a way, with the way the Big 12 does it, really kind of, in my opinion, and I, like I said, would get your thoughts, really benefited of uh, TCU in that in that aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're going into overtime. I wonder, you know, if it impacted his decision and the play that he ran on fourth and one from the goal line, I think those were things that, you know, maybe he knew, hey, we did enough to get in, so why not try this? Um, it might have been a little different if they absolutely had to win the game. It was part of the question of what, what do these conference championship games really mean? Because, I mean, if you look at it, USC could have not played, which the Pac-12 used to do, and made the playoff. And High State didn't play and made the playoff. And Alabama and Tennessee weren't in those games, and it mattered, even though I do think there's something to what Nick Saban said about, you know, they, they, yeah, they would be favored against those teams that made the playoff, but they were also favored in the two games that they lost. Yeah. Yeah, that that whole thing with him going on a Fox and he went on Sports Center as well. I'm like, he has jumped on so many reporters uh, when they bring up point spreads against games, and then here he is using that as his argument uh, for Alabama to be a playoff team. Yeah, it was it was different, but I, you know, on one end we we can laugh at the ridiculousness of it, but the head coach, I mean, he he fought for his team. He can mm-hmm. go in the locker and say, "Hey, I was I really did everything I could to get this team in the playoffs, and now, you know, do we now we got to go out and focus on Kansas State?" And and that allows him to keep the locker room interested with a bunch of guys that obviously some of those guys went in the portal. Some of those guys are going to go to the NFL draft. Um, part of the continuing evolution of college football is a big business. Yeah, absolutely it is. I guess, you know, if he ever down the road, with you know, when he does retire from coaching, if he wants to jump into outbound politics, I think he's already got that. That uh, We can see he can he can pull that off as well. Uh, uh, the matchups, you know, real quickly on these games, you know, not do a deep dive on them. But, you know, first with the uh, Ohio State-Georgia matchup, I kind of, I think, if you would have said this matchup going to the weekend for a lot of people, you know, I'm friends. I know some friends that are Georgia fans. Okay. This is not too worry, but you see a, a Georgia defense give up over 500 passing yards to uh, LSU. And then of course we know what Ohio state can do through the air. Whoever's playing a receiver with CJ Stroud going into that matchup, you know, you know, obviously everybody's going to be favoring Georgia, but could you see some stuff there with what LSU was able to do in the past game where Ohio state can maybe not replicate that, but have some success through the air against the Georgia defense. Well, they can. They absolutely can uh, because they have better receivers than LSU does. They have two first-rounders in mm-hmm. Marvin Harrison and Mecca Buka, and C.J. Stroud is a potential first-round quarterback. It's a huge game for him because of all the NFL talent that's going to be on this field. So, yeah, I think I think there is. But, I mean, to the other end of that, they, they did have that success once they were trailing 35-10. to 10. So yes. you don't want to fall behind 35-10 to 10 to Georgia, and I wouldn't advise that. Yeah, because then that's when they just lean on that offensive line. We and, and that's one, you know, my next question for you. Of course, we've seen what happened in Ohio State against Michigan when Michigan was able to lean on them in the second half with their run game. Very, very successful, obviously, in a run game uh, for Michigan in that game in the second half, especially uh, with Georgia. 
leaning on that run game, of course, with what you have Stetson Bennett. I mean, what's been your thoughts seeing Georgia this year as they develop? Have you seen a little bit of a different team than they were last year versus this year? Same stuff, but, I mean, I like that they have – they don't – Brock Bowers is amazing. Don't get yes. me wrong. Uh, but they have a very balanced set of skill position guys. Like, like there's not one – other than Bowers, there really isn't a superstar. Like, Lad McConkey is a perfect role player. There's three running backs, Dylan Edwards and Milton and, and McKenzie. They're, they're really good, but they work together. And I think that's uh, what makes them very interesting is they can continue to do that, roll it that way. And, you know, at the end of the day, they have 200 yards rushing. Stetson Bennett hasn't been sacked in half a season. And um, the receivers are pretty good. So I, I think that's their, just the way that they do things. And, and it's very methodical and maybe not as flashy, but it gets the job done. Yeah, I think I saw somewhere uh, where, like, if you look at the stats, Stetson Bennett this year too. Like, uh, most of his yardage comes in the first three quarters, like thirty one hundred yards, and then he's only got like three hundred fourth quarter because they're either up so big he's out of the game, or they're just leaning on teams uh, with the run game. Just kind of, I wonder what his stats would be if he, if they, if Georgia was in kind of more competitive games throughout the whole year, he'd probably have bigger stats. Obviously, would have bigger stats then. Uh, with Stetson Bennett, what's been up? Uh, with him this year obviously a great story uh he's up for the Heisman he's one of the finalists uh just uh, what you've seen from him this year uh, well, you know I mean people are making the rounds and making fun of his age I think it's a bit of out of line that's his journey his journey is mm-hmm. different than say Lamar Jackson they've had different journeys as football players and uh there's nothing wrong with that so I look at Stetson Bennett as a guy that that hasn't made a lot of mistakes it continues to lead a team and you know it's got a chance to win back-to-back national championships and there isn't too many quarterbacks that can say that yeah that's true that's very true there's not many uh you're right to have been able to the uh, the state that claim uh and real quickly looking ahead to the tcu michigan matchup i feel like i'm about to ask you the same question i just did to kick off of the georgia ohio state uh when you look at tcu max duggan i mean that's another great story talking about Stetson Bennett, what max duggan has done just the grit and sometimes i feel like he wills tcu to these victories i mean almost victory uh against kansas state the big 12 championship game but uh the last couple weeks last two games ohio state and purdue were very successful through the air against the michigan defense uh with what tcu has has. Do you see them having that capability of being uh, successful through the air against the Michigan defense? Yeah, I mean, that game's really going to come down to uh, contrast and style, you know, which team can get their style to play. Uh, obviously, Big 12 and Michigan and TCU, these two schools have never played Big 12, Big 10 games. It really often comes down to that because the Big 10 school is going to be able to have some success on the ground, and the Big 12 school is going to throw it around. And, uh, It'll be a fun game. I do think that Michigan's running game will wear on them as the game progresses. It gets into the second half. Michigan, obviously, probably the best, not probably, they are the best second half team in the country. And uh, the way that they do that and have come up with adjustments for every game has been quite amazing. Uh, J.J. McCarthy this year, of course, going into the year, it was him and Kate McNamara. Then Jim Harbaugh went with J.J. McCarthy, who obviously was a guy that brings the running aspect of the game, you know, and be, look, we're not picking it, but just interesting, those, they match up with Georgia and see how that would, would change with McCarthy being the full-time quarterback. But with him, what you've seen this year, what, what have you seen with his development as a quarterback as the season went, has gone on? Well, it's just experience. I mean, the talent, the arm talent is amazing. He's a very good quarterback. He's got – live arm can get the ball down the field change the dynamics of michigan's offense with that and you know jim harville made the right choice so yeah i mean he's a really good player and i think you saw that the confidence that he brought into that ohio state game that was a place where they hadn't won in 22 years for him to go in there and show the confidence that he could do it was uh quite amazing yeah absolutely especially you know we go in that game and then Little Blake Corum, of course, he's out. And then you got Donovan Edwards there as well. It's like you, you kind of wonder where the running game is going to go. And then you got those two guys there uh, doing what they do. Uh, just and real quickly, you know, we're, we're recording this on Wednesday around one o'clock, uh, one fifteen Central Time. Uh, of course, early in that day, uh, Jeff Brom named a new head coach of Louisville, going home where he played. Just you know, just your initial thoughts on Jeff Brom going to Louisville and uh, what kind of team Louisville can expect now that he's uh, back home. Well, I mean, sometimes that pool to go home is, is just too much to pass up. And, mm-hmm. you know, he's obviously got a lot of pride in his own mater. I've always enjoyed watching Purdue play and his inventive play calling. I mean, they're, 
It, they call them the spoiler makers for a reason. Last week, notwithstanding, I think they were a little overmatched there. And, and, you know, I think he'll be able to do well at Louisville. It is an interesting move given that the big money is going to be at the Big Ten and the, and the SEC and, and those Power Five conferences that have a ton of money. But for him to go to Louisville, that's a program that we just talked about, Lamar Jackson. You find the right quarterback, mm-hmm. you can have some success there. Maybe They're probably going to have a hard time finding another Lamar, but – you know, somebody in that neighborhood would get them on the right track real quick. Yeah, that's a, a, a Lamar a Lamar Jackson type. They don't they all crawl trees having them kind of guys, right. but you got the guy there that knows how to develop them. So it'll be an interesting hire there. Obviously, there in the ACC and uh, Bill, it's been fun. I uh, always appreciate when I have uh, have you on the show. Uh, we could do this again after the national championship game, as we've we've done several times over the last years. But uh, if uh, listeners out there and viewers, because shows on YouTube, if they want to check you out, uh, uh, where can they follow you and all your work? Yeah, I'm at Bill Bender ninety two Sporting News. I, I- trying to figure out philip how many years we've been doing this and I, I do appreciate our conversations it's a ton of fun i think i want to say this is like year six or seven which yeah we've been doing it that long we must be doing something right so uh, i appreciate you very much oh yeah absolutely yeah i think i believe i've had you on uh since 2017 we've been doing this uh so uh, it's, it's always fun having you on and uh uh thanks again uh for your time bill and i look forward to talking again sometime down the road and hey, no problem thank you